we are back in our or Orville reviews. This is our spoiler review of Gently Falling Rain, episode four of season three. And so if you're looking for the non-spoiler review, it's going to be over there, over there in the corner. Somewhere. Right. And um, Round. if... <laughs> now, if you had, you know, subscribed and hit the bell for notifications, you would have gotten that. You would have got yeah, yeah, so exactly. like that, that was just yesterday. What are you doing? <laughs> Go ahead and fix Come that on. now, so that when episode five comes out, um, and we do have, uh, we do have hopefully a discussion with a friend of ours about episode three because we have skipped that, and I would like to go back to it because I, I think it's very worthwhile to, to discuss. Um, but we'll we'll see how that goes. And um, but in the meantime, this is episode uh, four, gently falling rain. I am the techno funk boy. He is the ancient dad himself. Thank you again for joining me and. Um, um, and so we're going to commence with spoilers. So you've been warned. Um, the first spoiler is, uh, as we mentioned before, I, I, I love this episode. And Bruce Box Leitner needs to come back many times um, as the president. Um, mm-hmm. I couldn't say that prior to spoilers because he does get stabbed in this episode, but he does survive. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, Thankfully, it was just. Yes. Special, so. <laughs> That's good. I was legitimately like, oh, no, what's going to happen? They are not going to kill him off right now. Not when he's like right in the show for the first time. Come on. Don't do this to me. My heart. But thankfully, he seems to have gotten better or he'll probably get better. I don't know. He was hitting on Claire. I wasn't certainly sure what was going on there. But <laughs> I, I feel like that president is just like that, though, like. When he first comes on board, he's like super complimentary to everywhere. He's very humble. Uh, he's very much like Sheridan, except Blue. Yeah, yeah. He's very except much like Sheridan. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, he's very humble. Which could not, he's very could not have been a coincidence. No. Come on. Like, no, that, this, that is like, absolutely planned. Well, and this is like, and this is the role of somebody who is, like, this is what Sheridan, like the whole point of Babylon 5 is not to tell the story of a war, but to tell the story of peace. And that's what this story is. It's it's them striving for peace. And so we do have Box Leitner playing the president who is working towards treaty making. And that's, you know, when when Sheridan becomes president in Babylon 5, that's that's his whole thing. That's, all, you know, he's he's setting up this, you know, this this whole treaty organization. And so, yeah, I don't think it's I, I don't think it's coincidence at all. I think. um uh, that, uh, that, yeah, he was definitely picked for this. And, um, yeah, well, not only that, but you sent me that link shortly thereafter of yeah. the unused script, that idea that they are putting into an audiobook form. And Bruce Boxleitner is the actual, I know. like, He's narrator of that. Right. I, and I mentioned, I forgot to mention that in the, um, uh, in the non spoiler one, but they have, yeah, they have announced that, um, uh, uh, Seth MacFarlane had written a, another script for this season and just, because the circumstances, they couldn't use it. And so he novelized it, uh, which I think is great. And I've pre-ordered it. But um, yeah, I might uh, I might snag the audio book, too, because uh, uh, Bruce Box Leitner is going to be the narrator. And um, I'm yeah. just a huge fan of his. Uh, between between Sh- between Sheridan and Tron, you, you just have two iconic sci-fi characters played by the same guy. That um, mm-hmm. uh, is just great. And so um, I... Um, I thought he was. I thought he was a great addition to this. Uh, I, I mentioned that it's like it, it keeps astonishing me that like Ted Danson keeps coming back to this show. Like, and I don't actually have a clue who that is. To be perfectly honest, like you're like Ted oh, Danson. I'm like, I, I don't know who that is. He's the, oh, did you did you not watch Cheers? No, no, no. I was I was way too young for that. Okay, you should. Well, it's a great show. You should. But he's the star of Cheers. He's the he's the bartender for Cheers. Um. And, uh, but yeah, it's like, uh, uh, you don't figure that he ran out of cheers money yet. And so he, he must actually like doing this, you know, sometimes you, sometimes you just take a job. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that show has been in like, what, what do you call it? Rerun like, syndication? Yeah. Syndication. Yeah. For like ever basically. Well, in, the, so. in, the, in the series ran for 10 seasons. I mean, it mm-hmm. was a smash hit and, um, Ted Danson yeah. made a Between... lot of money off that one. Between that and Frasier, it's like I'm just getting all these uh, classical uh, show recommendations lately. <laughs> Have you seen Frasier? No, no. 
Oh, you, you would you like... You recommended it to me. Did at I? At least three people. Yeah, and oh, at least three people on like my it. trip to DC told me, like, oh, you got to watch Frasier. I mean, that's just like, you got you to. Gotta. Like, people younger than me were telling me that. Yeah, no, Frasier's, Frasier's a pretty great show. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, uh, I, 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 in fact, still consider it, like, a top five sitcom for me. All righty. Um, but that's not the Orville. We're here to talk about the Orville season oh, three, yeah. episode four. <laughs> <laughs> Gently falling rain. Gently falling rain, um, which is a poem. <laughs> um. So Talia wins and starts killing people. Um, which, As you do. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's fair. And she captures uh, the delegation and threatens to kill them, too. And um, that's when Grayson takes off with the Orville after um, uh, implementing Directive 21. And um, so you have a president, an admiral, a senator, a captain, and a navigator sitting in a cell. Um I was trying to think it's like of a joke. very complicated joke. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this is this is gonna, it's gonna take a while, okay? Um, yes. But Talea has run on this populace, uh, this populace um, platform of of you know that the the Supreme Chancellor has kind of betrayed his people, uh, trying to make peace with these these outsiders who who um, you know don't understand Krill's position in the galaxy and um and they uh they completely underestimate her um and uh she wins and so she promptly kills corn um but then she finds out that mercer is is part of the prisoners and um this is this is one of those things that i thought um to Leia, uh uh what what is the name uh who's playing her i think it was michaela something um she just did this great uh great great job uh michaela mcmanus um she was so good in this as playing somebody who on the the exterior has to be really tough and mur- frankly murderous um, right but on the on the other side is is trying to hide that part of herself that is is very sympathetic with Ed, um, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, also with the product of their relationship, which which was my oh crap moment. <laughs> <laughs> which exactly was the same one for me. I was just like, wait a minute. Number one, that child is way too old to be like, what, two years old at this point? <laughs> way yeah. too old. But, you know, I can accept that they age differently. But number two, it's just like, man, that is like a really interesting. Whether or not they plan that from the beginning, I have no idea. Like, I don't know how much he actually has planned for like the rest of the seasons and all that and where the storyline is going. But that was a really clever way, I think, to throw kind of a whole wrench in the operation, honestly, because yeah. like, I, I honestly was just like, oh, well, she's already killed like the sitting, what was it, chancellor or whatever the leader was called, just right there. And it's just like, how in the world are they going to come back from this? Because right from the beginning of the season, like it felt like, oh, OK, this is going to be like an entire season long arc, this treaty with the Krill and everything. And that was only like two episodes ago mm-hmm. when they actually like started venturing into their their space and everything. And they signed that little treaty or at least, you know, the initial agreement. And it's just like, okay, this has got to last for a while. But no, no, this does not. This completely changes the status quo that they just established, like, this season. So it's like, well, if they're willing to, like, throw that much, like, storyline around and go, like, back and forth like that, that's, whew, I have no idea where these next, what is it, like, six more episodes are going to even be yeah. <laughs> heading to? Yeah, it's no, like they, yeah. They, I don't know what to think at this point. I don't know how to predict anything. They are tackling really big episodes and really big ideas. And, um. Uh, and like, uh, I was reading today that McFarlane is intentionally using his budgets very, very wisely to do sustainable effects and stuff so that if they are renewed at a lower budget for season four, that it's not going to look 
worse. Right. And so he's, but at the same time, it's like, holy smokes, these episodes look great. With the extended runtime, they do play more like a movie than they do mm. an episode. You know, you kind of reach a point where a normal episode would end and then it twists completely into something else. And um, I think I think they've been using that extremely well. Uh, and this is one of those things. So like Talia in season one, um, uh, uh, Ed, Ed disguises himself as a Krill and gets aboard the ship that she's on and she kind of befriends him thinking that she's one of them and he ends up having to betray her um while okay i'm gonna say betray because he actually spares her life because she's the teacher of the children and he doesn't want to kill the children right which is going to, is pulling right into this episode too um uh then Talia does not see it that way, you know, um, and, and it doesn't help that Mercer did kill her brother. Yeah. Yeah. You can see how there would be a little bit of bad blood there. Right. And so she embarks on this, this very long-term plan where she gets surgically turned into a human, uh, gets herself aboard the Orville and very slowly works her way into Ed's heart and, uh, starts a relationship with him only then to betray him which was a fantastic uh, sequ- uh, uh, little arc um, just because mm-hmm. they introduce her. Like you mentioned in the um, non-spoiler video, like they introduce her several episodes beforehand and um, it then, it then it kind of grows from there. I mean, even just subtle stuff like uh, her talking to him at the bar and stuff like that. It's like, right. it's really well done. Um, and but bonding over the movies that they're watching and she like, just the hints that they oh. drop that she has no idea about the, yes. the popular culture of the time. It's just like, oh, well, okay, it's just really old popular culture, I guess. But no, she, no, it's just because she has no clue. <laughs> right. And she tries, he tries to get her into Billy Joel. And that plays into this because when they meet each other, Talia goes, you know, um, uh, something like, you know, nothing to say, huh? And she, and, uh, and Mercer responds, it's like, well, it looks like you've become a real uptown girl. And, uh, it, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was it was just a great line. I mean, just because he is like he's struggling in this scene between the anger of what has just happened, the betrayal of her, but also he let her loose in the last episode because he thought they had made a connection. Mm-hmm. And he and so he did not put her into prison, but instead released her back to the krill because he thought something could come of it. And now she's imprisoned all of his friends. And so there's betrayal there, but there's also something there's some, there's that optimism, optimism that, that Mercer has toward everything that refuse, uh, he, he refuses to give up on people. Mm-hmm. And that's this, like, um, I mean, and he makes dumb decisions sometimes with it. Um, but that's what's driving him. And so it, it, that was a great line because it was, it was reminding the audience of the history, but it's also reminding her of their history. Right. And so I, I thought that was, that was great. Um, and it just I, goes to show that these characters have a connection beyond just like what's written there. It's just like, they have spent time with each other, like off screen. Yeah. And it's like, almost like they're referencing that specific like time that they spent that, you know, just the general, like, okay, we're just hanging out and everything. Like mm-hmm. they built this relationship both on and off screen and it shows. And I think, I think it's funny that the, uh, the teacher, the school teacher goes straight to a dictator. You know, that pipeline is pretty interesting, but <laughs> like, probably not, probably not incorrect, you know, teacher to dictator pipeline. Yeah, that, make, that makes sense. But you know, you could see what could actually bring her to that point, honestly. Yeah. Like having experienced their culture and having been both charmed and like betrayed by that culture as well. You could see why she would be, exceptionally fired up about it so i i, I can yeah. appreciate how they did that right um uh, just because there there are uh, just a couple of a couple of things that i forgot to say at the beginning but really should have been said first of all um andre uh Bermanis and brandon braga wrote this one they they have consistently churned out some of the best episodes in all three seasons uh together mm-hmm. uh john casser is directing again my understanding is that seth mcfarlane and john casser direct all the episodes this season 
and right. which is great because both of them are great uh, behind the camera. Um, I, uh, I I would bring this up just because it's the best line of the episode, but also it um, it it harkens back uh, to um, uh, Charlie being the pessimistic one is when they're doing they're doing a pub crawl through history in their in the yeah. old west i totally forgot about that too oh uh, and isaac comes in in a hat and a fake mustache and, and i wrote down what he said because it was great it's uh, the best line uh this town will not accommodate the numerical totality of our combined mass <laughs> <laughs> Um, but Charlie, but Char- when he comes in, Charlie says, uh, uh, well, darn party's over. And it's again, <laughs> she's carrying that mm. and like, uh, her extreme hatred for Isaac, uh, in huh. that, that is, uh, that does get carried over. Um, I didn't even catch that line, that part of the line, honestly. So I, I watched it twice. I, <laughs> uh-huh. I, I caught it. I caught, uh, I caught it the second time. Um, it was, uh. Uh, oh, and even before that, they show the Supreme Chancellor, Annie. Yes, that was the part I was going to bring up. <laughs> and yeah. like, oh, just the fact that it ends with the sun will come out tomorrow. And, and he's like, this is very haunting. This is like a bad portent. The sun, because they, they're they they're completely enshrouded in darkness. And, and if mm-hmm. they get into sun, they die. And so <laughs> it's it's like that whole, that's, it, uh, oh. Uh, I can't remember who said it. I may, may have been one of the admirals says, I knew we should have gone with Oklahoma. <laughs> and, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh gosh. That was, that was a really good one. Honestly, they, yeah. it, it goes to show to hi- it highlights like the differences in their culture and everything and how that could be taken in a completely different way. <laughs> mm. It's like, Oh, the sun is a, is a warning of disaster and foreboding and da, 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 da. I just appreciate that they actually did have Annie like as an actual stage play. Like they showed part of it and, you know, you can see all the different actors and you're just like, oh, man, I kind of want to see the recording of that play done by all those different aliens. Like, I know, how in the yeah. world would that look? That was yeah. like, really well done for like a 10 second scene. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, it was great. Uh, it was it was really good. Um, I um, Anaya is the name of the daughter. And Anaya means gently falling rain, mm-hmm. um, which is where this title is coming from. But I think like uh, I think that is playing into it that that these like um, she's coming from the culture of of the sun and from a culture of darkness, you know, of the storm and the the kind of meeting point in between there is is kind of this this light rainfall and it Mm. plays into what Mercer says at the end is that she didn't. She didn't choose to be born at the eye of the storm, which is actually where the calm is. You know, uh, he didn't he doesn't say it like that. But I, I I think her name is is intentionally written that way as this meeting between, uh, first of all, of, of the eye of the storm, but also this meeting between these two very differing cultures. I buy it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that makes perfect sense to me. I was like, oh, wow, you, you looked into this way more than I did. <laughs> but yeah, that makes perfect sense. Honestly, it's just like. And it's interesting because like the cultures themselves have been so closed off for so long that they have mm-hmm. not been able to like really get to know each other, except within the last few years when like, number one, they snuck on board and they they had to sneak on board the ship and actually like take pictures of the, the Arcana. I think yeah. it's called. Or yeah, Arcana, Arcana. Whatever it's called. Arcana. And, 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 like they... and Mercer actually quotes it in this episode. Right, yeah. Which is so... really cool. It says, uh, with every child... Uh, uh, every child born, a new is world is a new... created. Yeah, with something. every child, a new wor- world is born. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and it's like... in that line by itself is opening up the krill deeper than we've seen them. We've only seen military krill. Right, right. But but they but they are starting to get to know this culture, you know, and um, it's a very is... recent one, too. So, yeah, the, like they had no idea about anything up until a few years ago during that season one episode. And just the fact that they are already starting to open up and even 
possibly consider a peace treaty of some sort, even if it's, you know, very short lived. It's like, okay, well, this is super interesting. It makes you wonder like how these types of like, not necessarily first contact situations would be, but these like differing treaties and everything and entering them into whatever the union is, whatever the, the Starfleet equivalent is in this universe. And it, it, I don't know, it's just really cool to see like, this is not necessarily like the utopian perfection at this point, but it you could see like the struggles it is for them to get to that area like that mm -hmm. you know star trek had already basically gotten to that point so it's kind of like that in between time which is interesting yeah yeah and and i i mean and, and you know wild wild ideas like hey get to know your enemy and you probably will find out you have more in common than you thought type things i i like bizarre yeah that's that's insane we don't really want to talk more about that at all um mm -hmm. but yeah that's like um in, in with with the humans learning more about the krill the audience is learning more about the krill and like in seeing the reasonable elements in their culture the the elements of their culture who love family and who love children and that's that's that was the surprising thing to mercer the first that first episode where he was on board was that there were kids there and they were they were learning and they were curious and it was like it hadn't entered his mind that, you know, like, oh, this crazy warlike race would like family, too. And right. um, that, yeah, this, this whole uh, all the Krill episodes have been just been kind of opening up that um, that people uh, uh, both to the characters and to the audience, which I think has been just really well done. Um, I mean, I, to me, it makes me think about the the way the Cardassians are portrayed all throughout Deep Space Nine. And I can't remember. I think it was Goldie Codd who was talking about like, oh, in Cardassia, we have four or five generations sitting at one table and we value our family and our lineage so much. And it's just yep. like, oh, OK, this this race that was initially portrayed like they are functional, like space Nazis, like early on, especially in the next generation. But the way that they are super humanized and you get to know their culture a lot really echoes a, a lot of similarities here, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think it's, I think it's been, been absolutely great. Um, uh, uh, there was, um, there was one exchange between Mercer and, and Talia I really liked. It's when Mercer quoted Ozymandias to her mm -hmm. and her response was wonderful. It's like, it, she says, our time in this realm is finite. One can live it in the light of command or in the darkness of servitude. I choose the way of Ozymandias. And it was like, that, that was a so good. <laughs> great response to that poem. It's like, mm. you're going to try to throw poetry at me, please. <laughs> it, it's a poem. <laughs> Although I do find it interesting that the uh, comparison she's made to like the light of command or the well, darkness yeah, that, of servitude would be kind of weird in that, their culture where it's mostly right. darkness but and i wonder if the writing room they're like you know that really should be flipped they're like no it's a great line just leave it no one will notice <laughs> that will be quoted years as, from now <laughs> right as um as seth mcfarland is watching this episode he's like darn you techno funk boy and ancient dad himself <laughs> <laughs> you figured it out <laughs> he's like i told them that line come on <laughs> um but Mercer actually finds out about this child because there is there is this element in the society that does want peace that um, and, and, and we really start to see that we've only been dealing with the military of Krill up until now. And so, you know, we, we've seen we've seen the hammer of Krill, but now we're starting to see the actual culture of Krill. And um, and so they they uh uh, uh, Talia was going to let him go, but he gets intercepted by this group that's saying, Hey, you got it. You, you really need to see this. And, uh, meets Anaya. The girl who plays Anaya is great. Like yeah, her makeup very was good. great. Mm -hmm. Um, just combining the two, the elements, like her skin is the color of humans, but you know, she's got the big ridges and the whole thing, the whole scene was really good. Um, mm -hmm. She's so, a really good actress for her age, honestly. Yeah. It's like, who even? Gosh, I don't even know how was, old she is, but right, man, she she really pulled the the really sweet and uh, sincere nature of it, of a child that'd be basically mm -hmm. sheltered her entire life, like not being mm -hmm. able not being able to go outside or even really talk to anybody else. 
You know, that's something we talked about in episode one of they're they're giving big scenes to kids. Now, now this girl is younger still, um, mm-hmm. but they're giving big emotional weight scenes to kids and they're pulling it off like uh, they're they're doing a good job. And that's got to be a testament to McFarland and who is it? John Casser. They're directing. Yeah. Like, oh, my goodness. I don't know how you could pull a, <laughs> right. a performance like that off with a child, yeah. but hats off to them for being able to do so. Right. Um, so Mercer goes back to try not just to save his own skin, but to, to try to make all of this stuff work and, uh, to appeal to Talia as, uh, as a mother. Now she is hidden away in Aya and, um, because I, obviously if words of this girl gets out, she is like, I mean, literally probably going to be stabbed, um, in front of crowds, you know? <laughs> That seems to be the way they do things. Yeah, it it, it would reek of it would definitely reek of hypocrisy among right. that crowd. That's for sure. Yes, um, just a wee bit, just a wee bit. And uh, and so they, man, I love this exchange. I loved it, just the way of him trying to plead with her and not getting anywhere and growing frustration until he finally just shout. You know, they start shouting. You know, mm-hmm. and um, uh, he he suggests, well, why? Well, why did you just keep it then? And, uh, you know, why didn't you just get rid of it? Uh, get rid of her. And she says, how human you uh, how human of you to ask that question. But you terminate life with abandon. Do you not? And it's like, oh, crap. And then uh, <laughs> right. uh, and then she shows uh. him what happens to couples when um when they have an when they we're not gonna be monetized anyways i don't have monetization (laughs) when they have an abortion (laughs) and basically they're confronted with a computer simulation of their child and um uh and mercer is horrified at this horrified shook it you might even say shook (laughs) it and um uh it it is one of those it's one of those things like you see sometimes on twitter it's like this isn't the own that you think it is like right. like he's like <laughs> you know do you really want her to to grow up on a planet like this <laughs> it's like dude i mean um, i think she she actually won that debate i mean that yeah. like uh, i mean her line uh and this this is one of the times when the writers who um who would not agree with me on this issue are fair and and actually every time every time mercer has a conversation with a krill about anything dealing with morality or <laughs> or religion he ends up losing and Pretty i don't think the writers time. intend that but <laughs> <laughs> i i know i know it's not every single time but but uh but it, there's been like there's been so many times that we've talked about it is like yeah yeah, Mercer, you did not pull that off. Like, <laughs> you, you, you're you're not winning the way you think you are. Um, and this is one of them. Like, um, it's an interesting clash of worldviews. Yes, right. Uh, and, uh, but the writers are being fair with the issue, and and I think the writer, I, I, you know, what I would assume the writer's view to be ends up not coming across the best because, um, you know, she's horrified that, you know, uh, humans kill their kids. And he's horrified that they would want they would want to show parents who kill their kids what they could have had. And, right. Yeah. Um, and uh, like, yeah, it says like, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, they they seem much more reasonable on this than we do. <laughs> just just um, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> that seems to be a, a good middle middle ground in the two extremes there. <laughs> right. Um. But this is like, and I, but I do think this is where Mercer loses, loses the conversation, in mm-hmm. in his, in his views on abortion, he gets overzealous, and kind of cuts off the conversation in anger, um, and that it that makes her defensive and calls an end to it, you know, in that okay, fine, you're just going to be killed then, basically, right. um. But that is when uh, Directive 21 is actually sprung, that Lamar and Dr. Finn have snuck onto the planet uh, disguised as Krill, and they come in and save them and take them out uh, while the battle's happening in the stars. And um, 
The alliance takes off. Obviously, the the president President Sheridan has to hit on Claire for a little bit. That was a little bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, things are looking brighter now that I see you here. It's oh, like, yeah. oh okay. she, she says, she says, Mr. President, I promise I normally look better than this. He's like, well, you look pretty good to me. Yeah, <laughs> it's, there like, you go. <laughs> it's, it's like, like ah, Sheridan everybody still got it. Everybody's got a thing for Claire in this series. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Uh, oh, I, you know, oh, I didn't um, uh, uh, mention uh, Lamar hitting on Tala at the beginning. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, that we might uh, we might actually get a stable romance, but but you know with Lamar, I doubt it's going to be that stable. But maybe he settles down. Maybe maybe I don't know. Maybe and then there's Gordon up. and Charlie. Who knows? <laughs> Seem to have something going she's on. Like, like the... she's like twenty. He's like fifty. <laughs> I mean, that's not what that episode was like insinuating to me. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh uh, wow. Well, um, but uh, yeah, and so this was um. Oh, I meant. Uh, uh, <laughs> so the shuttle is trying to get aboard because there's no transporters on the Orville. You know, the shuttle's trying to get aboard the Orville in the middle of this battle, and so like the Orville swoops in and shh, and the shuttle comes around and like crash lands in. And as they're crashing land in, I'm like, I'm like, wait, what? What? I forgot what the new ship was called, but it's like, um, the the Tyranodon. 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 It's like, yeah. They're gonna hit that. They haven't even used it yet. And, uh, but like the <laughs> the um, uh, uh, the docking bay was completely clear. I don't know how they managed to pull that off, but the ship comes crashing in, and it's like, oh, okay, it didn't hurt anything. I was like, mm-hmm. that would have that would have been a nice twist. I, I, I'm I'm assuming that those ships were out battling at the time, but um, uh, <laughs> at the same time, it's like um, I, I thought for sure that that. The shuttle was going to plow into everything in that shuttle, <laughs> shuttle bay and right. destroy it. Um, that is an interesting point that you bring up about there not being any transporters in this universe. Because I was like just really thinking about it for the last like few episodes and just thinking, man, if they had transporters, like how much would these plots be different? Honestly, oh, yeah. like actually having to use the shuttles and go from place to place physically. I feel like that helps them a lot more in like the writing area versus the transporters can just be used like willy nilly and they have to make up some kind of excuse for, you know, not working yeah, in TNG right, and right, everything. Right. I'm good to get a so Ferens, like... Captain. You know? and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. It, so it's, it's good uh, to see that they have that limitation that. Right. That helps and a I, lot. I really do like that. Like, uh, like, uh, like, I mean, look, in, in, in Star Trek, I like transporters, but it needs to stay in Star Trek. Like, you know, the, right. um, that's just just moving that you know into a new into a new series it just it's it seems too much and uh and yeah i agree i i agree i like i like them having to um to actually go places and stuff um very much like babylon 5 weird (laughs) uh so at the end of the day uh gently falling rain uh like um like there's so like like I don't I don't know I I would doubt that they would return to this kind of overarching plot this season again. This seems to be like Talia's story seems to be like a once a season type of a thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I this is yet another reason I like I I really do hope that Hulu renews it, um. I think uh, I mean I, I, shoot I'd love seven seasons of this, but you know uh, a, a fourth a fourth season would be would be at very least would be really great, mm-hmm. um, especially if they know from the beginning that it's actually not going to get renewed after that. You know, yeah, that's and that that you know that that That'd is the helpful. thing. It's like you know if 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 you filmed everything and you're just kind of on on the edge of your seat going it's going to be renewed, then you you know you might have left something that you don't get to finish when. If you if you know that you have a, a final season, then you get to tie up some some loose ends and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, either either they front loaded this season with all the good episodes, and it's just gonna be crap from here on out. <laughs> maybe maybe they're trying to like okay, we best four episodes at the very beginning. Hopefully, Hulu will renew us 
when everybody's excited about those four episodes and all the, the filler will be after that. Um, but it doesn't seem like it. They're like, um, this season so far has been really intense and it doesn't really seem like it's going to be letting up. Right. Yeah. And just looking at some of the, uh, episode titles coming up, it's just like, Oh wow, that, that could go pretty much anywhere. It's like, yeah, the next episode is a tale of two topaz. Mm-hmm. And after that is twice in a lifetime. Uh, it could be another time travel episode. Could be, could be from unknown graves. That sounds pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Night blue. Yeah. Future unknown domino. I don't know. I don't know. They don't really have previews up either. So it's just like, and I, I do appreciate that Hulu is not doing what they're doing for some other seasons where they like skip several weeks in between for the next episode. These seem to actually all be coming out week by week. So mm-hmm. thank you, Hulu, for not, you know, destroying this like you've destroyed so many other seasons of TV. It's <laughs> <laughs> so like this next episode will air two months from now. Maybe we'll, we'll maybe if you wish really hard for it. Oh, man, I, I will tell you this. Um. You are probably too young to have exactly. watched the first season of 24 when it aired. No, I was watching that. You were. Okay, so you might remember this. They spread those 24 episodes from September to May. And like, oh and everything was a cliffhanger. <laughs> and so like they they hit one in, in like late November. And they're like, we'll be back in six weeks. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, and starting in se- season two, they still did the twenty-four episodes, but they would do them in a half season, like January to May, right, and that way yeah. it was every week and sometimes two, twice a week, um, and that worked out much better for twenty-four because, holy smokes, like uh, wait, waiting weeks to find out what happened was infuriating. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Funny you brought that up, actually. That's that's one of the things, like, if we're not watching a movie on Christmas Day, we're either we're watching a movie or, like, a season of 24 every Christmas year, basically, for the last, like, 10 or 15 nice. years for my family. So it's like, oh, okay. We're cultured. I wouldn't... Uh, I'd, I'd actually really like to, to go through at least, like, the first five seasons of 24. I think it was tw- season five. The um, uh, Season five is excellent. That's the one with the... Um, crazy president i i think so because something happens really early on and yeah 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 that's so, the yeah, best season yeah. that season was oh yeah. that season was great yeah and we lived around like, the area where they say they were filming or the, they they say they were at in the actual like that part of california so it was like oh no you could not get from you know fresno to mojave in <laughs> 30 minutes or something <laughs> whatever it was I'm sure Jack Bauer has. Jack Bauer could do it. I, I feel Bauer. like he could do it. <laughs> if anybody, why isn't he on the Orville? Come on, <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland. Let's Kiefer go. Sutherland, come on. I look, everybody else has been on. Like, I mean, and and I know part of this is because Seth MacFarlane knows everybody in Hollywood and has been right and is friends with everybody. He seems like a genuinely likable guy um, that uh, uh, seems to make friends easily. But just the 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 people he has got to guest star on, on these episodes. Um, uh, just, um, why? Well, uh, okay. I'm blanking. I'm blanking on the dude's name. Um, I'm, who played the, the blue skinned guy in season one. Skin guy. Bruce Boxleitner. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I gotta look it up. Could you imagine Peter Jurassic? <laughs> Be great. Uh, Derulio. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh uh, what's so his name? Uh, Rob Lowe. Yeah. Rob Lowe, yeah, appears <laughs> in the pilot episode in complete make- makeup and has zero lines. Right. Like <laughs> I remember you mentioning that. You. You 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 got to know some people to be able to pull that off. <laughs> And, um, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what, we'll see what's up, um, up for the next episode, which I'm probably gonna watch tomorrow, but we'll be back next week and, um, probably watching a little bit, honestly, just get it started at least. Yeah. No kidding. Um, and, um, and so, uh, uh, to mention again, we skipped episode three. Yes. 
Because um, I, I was a scrub that was out of town. Well, you were out of town. I planned to just do it anyways, but I didn't. And it turned out for the best because we've had a lot of discussion and, and one of our friends has caught up very rapidly. And I am. He used my time dilation principles to be able to do that. I'm, I'm pretty really, much convinced yeah. at this point. I'm really hoping because uh, because he is caught up. I, I am. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to invite him for next week because he has some he has some thoughts on episode three that I think would make a really great discussion, um, especially because I rewatched it and I liked it a lot more the second time, like a lot more. Okay. I'll have to try um, it again. I guess I'm, you know, I'm just the stupid one around here. I get it. So, you know, I don't think too deeply about things, apparently. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So that I'm still will... thinking about what Alanda, Alon, eh, I'm still thinking about what Peter Jurassic would be like in yeah. the world as like a Londo Malari figure. I'm just like, oh, that'd be so glorious. It would be great. so good. That would be that. That would be great. Um, uh, uh, I, I do know. I do know this next episode does have Yaffet in it. Oh, perfect. Okay. And so uh, I wonder if this is like his final performance of the season. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Um, Seth MacFarlane it, it, it tweets it whenever, whenever he's coming up. He's like, "Get yeah, yeah, in this episode. Thank you, Norm, for you know finishing because he he yeah. recorded his his whole season before he died. Right. Which is which is great. Um, because yeah, it's yeah. just amazing. He's a great character. Character. Um. All right. Well, we're gonna end it. Like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, tell your friends and family. Um, send it through the mail. <laughs> Just write it on, write it on a postcard. YouTube.com slash the techno funk boy. Yeah. F subscribe. G one eight <laughs> dash, whatever the <laughs> draw a little bell icon on there, you know, right. Whatever you need. <laughs> and we will, uh, we will catch y'all, uh, catch y'all next week.